Today I'm heading six hours north of Brisbane up the Bruce Highway to 1770. It's a spot that's high on the hit list of a lot of travelling anglers for good reason. There's some great creeks and estuaries which sit around the area. What I really want to do when I get up there though is head out of that deep water entrance and run out to the Barrier Reef. It's about 50 k's out there but it's well worth the trip. The things that you can see and the fish you can catch. 1770 is very well known as being the gateway to the Southern Barrier Reef. I've got on board a handy little bit of modern technology today to, to make the trip a little bit easier. It's the Magellan GPS unit, the Explorer 610. For some reason the weather blows up and I have to go fishing in those estuaries and creeks. Magellan are really well renowned for having a great library of bush tracks. So if I do want to go and find a few sneaky spots off the beaten track, I've got just the tool on board. It's a new day on the water, great weather. Great spot with huge amount of opportunity with regards variety of species, but now I've got to go out and find them just like any new day on the water. And what I'm going to start doing is using my eyes to start with. See which way birds are going. You've got to remember that those, those little critters have got to eat to survive, and somehow they always seem to find where that bait is and where the bait is the predators are. Very often I head out in a day on the water, I've decided to go south, and as I'm heading that way, I watch all these birds charging to the north. It very often tells you something that you may be going the wrong way. So as I start cruising out in the ocean towards some of the GPS marks I've stolen for this spot, what I'm gonna do is keep my eye out for where birds might be heading to, and that might start narrowing down that search area. The other thing I'm gonna do then is start using the eye on the sounder, see where there might be temperature changes, and then also instinct. Too often we ignore that little voice in our head which is going, Nige, maybe you should be going that way, because I reckon that's where the fish are gonna to be today. Anyway, enough talking, start using the eyes, and let's go about trying to find fish in this great spot. Head shakes, you're gonna lose fish. That's often when it happens. There you go, only shark mackerel. Yep, that's what it is. Oh, there you go, that's what the fuss was about. Whew. One of the species of mackerel, not one of the most desired ones, but nonetheless, good sport, typically on like gear. And there you go, it's chomped away, that little 70 gram Halco twisty. It's a very, very versatile lure. Always got a few in the box, because days when you've got to go searching, having either your soft plastics or your metal slugs on board, just let you do the job a lot more easily. Better fish, that's a better fish, come on. Ate it on the drop, there we go. Come on, get him up, get him up, get him up. There's lots of sharp stuff down there. You want to get fish up quick. Come on, what do we got? Fishing in 20 metres of reef and just jigging a, a soft plastic up off the bottom. See if I can G up some of the local predators. Here we go. Looks like a very, very lovely red throat. Look at that. Aren't that pretty fish? Oh, there we go. Beautiful red throat emperor. Aren't they special fish to catch? And they fight superbly well. I've been reefed a number of times by these. You hook them close to home, they do their best to get back inside the door very, very quickly. So you've got to get them out fast, lead that nose back to, back to the boat to win those sorts of battles. And there you go. I've uh, opted to go for a soft plastic for a little while, just see if a slightly more subtle presentation will undo a bit of reef fish in its first cast. The little Z-Man, one of the minnow style plastics. You obviously get different styles of plastic, some with paddle tails and some that just look like a bait fish and they dart and weave a bit now. I like this one because I could sink it. They sink very easily, sink it right into the reef and give it those darty little hops before pausing it and letting it sink back down. In that case, I just hopped it up once and then as it was dropping back down, this guy came up and whacked it. Lovely fish. A bit of reef colour for the day. What do we got here? Plan at the moment. Oh, very nice. 
He came up with mates. Another nice reed throw. The searching starting to pay off. Magnificent reef fish. Look at the colours on these things. They are splendid fish. Prime reef hunters. They live alongside the coral trout. Many other things that you find along our rocky reef, particularly in our tropical areas. And made to hunt. He's got a surprisingly big mouth for a fish that size. They used to scoff at anything that comes into their area. Once again, plan here, I've found a, what looks like a quality reef edge. It's up in about six metres up in the shallows and then it drops off into 20 metres. And now what I've done is I've cruised that edge. I've seen quite a bit of current moving through it. And it's, for me, that means it's a good place for bait fish to be able to held in certain pockets where the, where the current moves and swirls. So you're gonna find your predators here. But then with that dropping contour, it's gonna be plenty of option for fish to, to, to sit and hide and wait for that food to come past, particularly now that the sun's getting up a little bit. Tactic here, just get a nice drift happening cast towards that shallow and then let that soft plastic get down to the edge and then just keep hopping along the bottom. Really watching that line so it doesn't stay on the bottom too long and get snagged. Hop it along, move the bait around and chances are you're gonna come across something that wants to eat it. Lovely. Getting the odd little bump and tap with a fish that's not really sucking it in. Sometimes an indication that coming towards slack part of tide and things like that where they're slowing down a little bit, you can still get them to eat it. Sometimes you've got to tease them into it. It's a case of, if you know they've come and had a bit of interest in your plastic, don't take it too far away from them. I'm getting these, a bump that will stop. The fish that's obviously had a little look at it. All I want to do at that time is a little jiggle of the plastic and then leave it there. Let it sit back down close to that fish. And very often tease them to coming back and going, no, this thing's annoyed me enough. I'm now going to eat it. Keep it in their space. Come on. What have we got here? He came and gave that a fair old whack. What have we got? Oh yeah, lovely. Nice fish. He's a coronation. Just out of 1770. Well, not just out, a good 50, 55 k's of 1770. And you come across a bunch of coral reef islands. It's the southern extremity of the Barrier Reef. And they're called the Bunker Group. They contain islands like Hoskins and Bolt and Lady Musgrave at the moment. Just in my background is Lady Musgrave. It's a beautiful spot to visit. There's a bunch of yachts moored there. There's a, a calm little harbour that you can sit in overnight. A fair few fishers come out here and sit overnight and then come out and fish for a weekend. It's a wonderful place to come and see. And not a long drive from Brisbane, just down the road from Gladstone, it offers some spectacular scenery for the traveling angler and some magnificent fishing. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> I've, I've traveled up the coast from Brisbane and not sure what fishing to expect, as you do when you go to new locations. And I've taken with me there's a minimal amount of gear, a couple of spin rods to let me do all this sort of stuff. I've got a couple of trolling rods, another good exploring technique lets you cover water and, and see more fish and put a few lures out the back is trolling. I've got some trolling outfits which will allow me to, to tangle with the bigger species which I might expect here like your Spanish mackerel and the likes. So that 8 to 15 kilo mould. A couple of spin rods, a couple of trolling rods. I've got a bunch of soft plastics, a box of jig heads, a box of metal lures and my trolling lures, and I've got a couple of surface lures thrown in as well. It's gonna let me try a variety of different techniques, a whole bunch of species, and it's not gonna load up the boat too much. All in all, a nice easy way to get on the road and see a new place and tangle with some new fish. Yeah. Oh. Let me whack that. Oh yeah. Come on. Got a bit of weight, this one. Come on. That is a chunky red throat emperor. And has absolutely belted that soft plastic on the drop. Fair chance it was getting within two metres of the bottom, within his range of vision just looking exactly like 
an easy meal and he has climbed all over that. A very, very special fish. Just totally lit up with colours. I never get tired of seeing the colours on these things. They are very, very special. Taste very good as well. I've got a very handy little feed off a quick little session drifting a reef edge. It's always nice to just take what you need for a good fresh feed of fish, particularly top rate reef fish, and then leave a few more for your mates. And next time you decide to come up this way. Just followed it up a long way off the bottom to eat that. Let's see what we have. Lovely. That's what we love to see. Good old common coral trout. Another one of the, the prize targets for anglers traveling up the coast to fish the barrier reef. Beautiful, beautiful fish. And one of my favorite on the plate, particularly around that size. He's 40 centimeters, legal size 38 centimeters at the moment in Queensland. And fabulous fare. And the beauty of just getting on the move, traveling to a new spot, seeing the sights. I started out going and chasing, a, using my eyes, but also chasing a few GPS marks. Borrowed a, a mate of mine's Magellan 610 Explorers. Really, really neat little GPS unit. It helped me in the car, put it in to find the fastest way to 1770. And I stuck it on my boat as well to go and get a few marks of his, check him out. Gave me a good starting point in a new area to go and see. I didn't catch any fish of his marks. Maybe he didn't give me the best ones, but never mind. It was a good starting point. I then used my eyes, my sounder, what I knew of the local area and where I most thought fish were going to be, around edges, current lines, where there were signs of bait, and I've come across a fair few new species. Well, not new species, but species in a new spot. It's Bill Classen here from The Fishing Show, and if you like this instructional video and want to learn more, it's simple. Go to fishingshowtv.com.au and see a whole host of additional videos.